Hello friends, welcome to my channel, Truth and Belief. I am talking about the women's right from the last few videos. Today is while discussing the same. Today's my topic is women's right in Islam. In Islam, men and women are moral equal in God's sight and are expected to fulfill the same duties of worship, prayer, faith, um, uh, almsgiving, fasting and pilgrimage to Mecca. Islam generally improved the status of women compared to earlier Arab cultures, prohibiting female infanticide and recognizing women's full personhood. Islamic law emphasizes the contractual nat uh, nature of marriage, requiring that a dowry be paid to the woman rather than to her family, and guaranteeing uh, woman's right of inheritance to an own and marriage property inheritance to uh, inheritance to own and marriage uh, manage property women were also granted the right to live in the matrimonial home and receive financial maintenance during marriage and setting period following death and divorce. The historical record, record shows that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, consulted women and weighted their opinions seriously. Women's Ummah Warqa was appointed Imam over her household by Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Prophet Muhammad's peace be upon him, last wife Aisha was a well-known authority in medicine, history, and rhetoric. Khalifa Umar, uh, Umar appointed women to serve as officials in the market of Medina. Biographies, uh, biographies of distinguished women, especially in Muhammad's household, show that women behave relatively autonomously in Islam. Uh, as per uh, Quran, Surah Al Hujra, chapter 49, verse 13, human beings, we created you all from a male and female and made you into nations and tribe so that you may know one another worldly the noblest of you in the sight of allah is the most god-fearing of you surely allah is all-knowing all aware in this verse of Surah al hujrat proves there is no racism in Islam. These words answer the questions why are there different tribes? Why all people are not same color? And why is world not single nation? Allah answers it by directly addressing the all humans saying human beings we created you all from a male and female and made you into nation and tribe so that you may know one another in this in this brief verse Allah has drawn the attentions of all mankind to three 
cardinal truths. Origin of man and woman is same. Allah made you into nation and tribe so that you may know one another. The only basis of superiority and excellence is God consciousness. It means men and women are equal. The origin of all of you is one and the same. Your whole species has sprung up from one man and one woman. All your races that are found in the world today are in fact the branches of one initial race that started with one mother and one father. In this process of creation, there is no basis whatsoever for the division and distinguish, uh, distinctions in which you have involved yourself because of your false notions. One God alone is your creator. Different men and women have not been created by different God. You have been made from one and the same substance. It is not so that the some men and women uh, 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 substance. So, uh, women have been made from some pure and superior substance and some other men and women from some impure or uh, an inferior substance. And you are the offspring of the same parents. In spite of being one in origin, it was natural that you should be divided into nations and tribe. Obviously, all the men and women on the earth could not belong to one and same family. With the spread of the race, it was inevitable that countless family should arise and then in, uh, in, uh, inevitable that after setting in different religions of the earth, there should be differences of color, features, languages and ways of living among the people and and it was also natural that those living in the same region should be closer in affinity and those living in remote regions not so close. But this natural difference never demanded that distinctions of inequality of high and low. The only basis of superiority and the excellent that there is or can be between man and woman or man and, and man or woman and woman is that of moral excellence. One person superior to other is that one should be more God conscious. Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him exposed that insignificance of racism in his khutbah in the speech that he made on the con uh, conquest of Makkah he categorized human into two righteous and sinful. Here human means men and women both. O people, men and women are divided into classes, the pious and righteous, who are 
honorable in the sight of Allah and the sinful and vicious, vicious who are contemptible in the sight of Allah. We are all men and women are the children of Adam and Adam had been created by Allah from clay. Thus Islam gives equal right to all women and men, rich and poor, noble and ignoble, and there is no superiority of anyone over anybody else in Islam except in terms of taqwa. And this is the basis of Islamic society. Okay, guys, I end my today's discussions with a hadith. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, say that Allah does not see your outward appearance and your possessions, but he sees your hearts and your deeds. Hadith Muslim and Ibn Majah. Thank you very much for watching my video. I will continue my discussions on same topic, women's right in Islam, in my next video. I hope you like this video, uh, video and you will find this video informative and useful. Thank you.